Ah! What's Gucci with it, veterans, YouTube, military, back again with another banger. Today, with updates, new dates, if there's anything, and changes to proposed schedule of rating of disabilities for mental health updates. Hey, as always, if you like this type of content, like, share, subscribe, comment down below your personal opinion on this. And as always, hit the like button. It don't cost you nothing. And let's get into this topic. <gasps> right off the back, hey, there's been no updates. There's been no updates to the date, regardless of whatever you hear. You know what I'm talking about. If you go to the registry website, you go to the VA's website, whatever the case may be, the information is still the exact same. However, we can speculate, we can, you know, we can plan for this proposed change to the schedule of ratings to take effect just going off of the timeline of the digestive issues. Hey, that was a two, two to three year lapse from start to finish. Even though there was no word that it was going to be finalized, it was still finalized with the, you know, it was still finalized and now implemented into law. So what does that mean for veterans? Well, I would say start getting more detail with gathering and reporting when it comes to medical evidence gathering for the A disability claims, especially if it's your first time. Now, under the current criteria, mental health go from zero to 100 percent. It's a lot easier. Oh, well, it's not a lot easier. It's a lot easier now to get service connected, at least at a zero percent, non-compensatable. Keep that in mind. Remember that. And, you know, move forward. So as long as you have a diagnosis, if you're filing a direct service claim, make sure you have in-service complaints, diagnosis, treatment to satisfy that service connection. Hey, cool. Then depending on your level of severity of symptoms, impacts to your personal life, impacts to your occupational life, that's going to determine if you're at zero, 50, 70 percent or 100 percent for any specific mental health disability or a combination of them all. You know, some veterans, they file for anxiety, depression, PTSD. However, once they get into that CMP exam, that examiner, hopefully if they're detailed, they're looking at this. Okay, cool. You know, yes, you have PTSD. I got your stressor. Okay. That gets you service connection. Cool. And you know, they go through your medical evidence and they notice that, okay, well you have high levels of anxiety, frequent instances of depression and you know things of this nature and you can get service connected with a main or just a combination of different disabilities so keep that in mind and the new criteria is not confusing at all it does kind of benefit veterans however you got to break it down you definitely got to read and understand this and i would say for those veterans who are at low va disability ratings for mental health or if they're not service connected but plan on submitting a va disability claim in the near future Definitely, you want to make sure that your VA, your medical evidence, either place you under the new criteria or the old criteria. You, you don't want to be underprepared, but the more evidence you have, the more prepared you are. It's going to be more beneficial for you in that claims process. Now, two of the most significant things with these, with the proposed changes, are going to be they're going to cut zero percent, and it'll just be from ten to one hundred percent to get service connected for any disability for mental health. Now, with that being said. You're definitely going to have to meet the criteria for service connection. Now, they just updated the criteria and everything like that, you know, but some of the basic requirements still remain the same. If you're filing direct service for mental health and service complaints, diagnosis, treatment, whatever the case may be, build the bridge. If you're filing secondary, you need to show causation. How is low back pain causing depression? or anxiety? How is your migraines causing insomnia or anxiety and depression? You want to make sure that is being captured. All right, so just getting into this, let's break it down. So with the domains being added, in order for the VA to accurately measure occupational or social impairment due to a mental health disorder, VA proposes a measure of veterans' functionality and their functioning within each five domains. Those five domains are going to be cognition, Interpersonal interactions and relationships, task completion and life activities, navigating environments, self-care. So with that being said, bringing it down even further, a veteran is going to need to get 100%, let's, let's say 100% permanent total, for example. A level four impairment of one domain 
or two level three impairments, level three impairment in two domains, and then you know so on and so forth. Seventy percent of veterans going to need a level, you know, level impairment of three in one domain, or a level of two impairment in two or more domains. So it's it's definitely detailed. It's broken down. There's drilling into all of these different domains. And then in those domains, what is the level of impairment in each domain? So if you're at zeros across the board, more than likely you're going to get service connected at that 10% level. Intensity and frequency of impairment in each domain, the more helpful it's going to be for veterans to get service connected, as well as tap into that 70 and 100% VA disability levels. Now, breaking it deeper, each domain you're going to need a level of impairment. Whichever one that meets your criteria, that's the one that the VA is supposed to give you. So if you're a level three and a two across the board and across all five of these domains, more than likely you're going to get a 50% or higher on a VA disability rating. And if you had a three or more, that taps into the 70% as well as 100% levels. So definitely keep that in mind. When it comes to the current schedule ratings for mental health, right now it's easy for veterans to get service connected. Let's be honest. All you need is a diagnosis, some medical evidence, some symptomology, personal statements. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not when you break it down and you compare it to what this future proposed criteria process is what's going to be needed. It's a lot easier right now to get service connected as long as you educate yourself. If you've been denied, read your decision letter. What was the reason for denial? For PTSD, some of the common reasons for Denial for VA disability claims regarding PTSD is due to a lack of a diagnosis or due to a lack of the veteran stressor being conceded by the military. What does that mean? Their stressor cannot be identified by, by having its onset in the military, in a deployment, in garrison, training. Nowhere in the military a therapist or doctor, psychiatrist can pinpoint, yes, this is the specific event or series of events that develop this veteran's PTSD. If it's unclear to your psychiatrist and therapist, you're never going to get a, a stressor. If you're missing it, definitely you need to address that with your with your uh, your medical team. Diagnosis stressor for PTSD for all other mental health disabilities, you don't need that. You just need a diagnosis and for a doctor to acknowledge, yes, your depression started due to your military service, due to your deployment to Afghanistan, Iraq, due to your involvement of, you know, due to your direct interactions when you was in Israel, you know, when you, when you was in um, Djibouti, whatever the case may be. So, and when it comes to direct, I mean, when it comes to secondary, even better, you just need to show how your already service-connected disability has been causing the new mental health disability. I mean, as simple as that sounds, you just need to complain. Go to your doctor, complain about it, both in person as well as leave a digital footprint as well because it's building medical evidence along the way. Send them secure messages. Call them. Have them type, you know, if it's old school, have them type that information in, fax it to the mainframe. I don't, I don't know what they need to do, but they definitely need to be recording your information and maintaining your medical evidence accurately. So whenever you do need it, I'm sorry. So whenever you do need it, it's there for you to use for your VA disability claims to so always be building blocks. You know what I'm talking about? So these are some of the updates, the domains and the different intensity and frequency levels per each domain is what veterans really need to focus on whenever these new changes take effect, because we know they're going to take effect. We just don't know when. And that suspense state that was on the regulations website, you know, Congress website, where, you know, wherever you see the tracking for this documentation, the lab state is passed. However, just going off of similar lab states, lab dates, lab dates on other proposed changes, such as the digestive issues that recently took effect May 2024 with no other type of notification to veterans. Hey, we can still expect this one to be adjudicated, you know, finalizing itself and being implemented maybe in the next year. You know, hey, I would say prior to <laughs> Biden getting out in the office and fucking Trump daddy coming in, but hey, I don't know. Y'all let me know. 
But until next time, this motherfucking D-Ball, y'all say Gucci with it.